We're here outside the Concordia Student Union offices. The CSU held its first town hall meeting with the students to discuss the projects that the executive are working on, hear the comments of the students on those projects, and uh, where students also have the chance to present any concerns they have. You say we are not aware of where our money is going, but is there a way to find out? I so, I mean, isn't it the student's responsibility to see? Well, if you go to the CSU and ask, where is my money going to, in terms of what, you know, my fee levy to the CSU is, the breakdown of it. You can always pass by the office. We have a policy of being transparent and you can always go through our VP finance office and he will run you down all of the expenses that have been spent. So this is not an issue at all. There are many ways of finding out. You just have to take the first step and this is actually the job at CSU, trying to make the students take the first step and go on and finding out what it is. If they do increase the fees though, uh, if there are students who can't afford it, their tuition even right now, do you think the administration would allow us to opt out of certain services if we can't afford that service? I, I don't that, that, that is a, No, that is not possible. Um, see, the big difference between student groups and the administration is that you can actually opt out of the student fee levy groups. The, uh, when what we call an institutional, mandatory institutional fees, um, you cannot opt out from it. The it's a, it's a, it's a fun, Yeah, that's what they call mandatory. It's, they're set on you and you have to pay them no matter what. And you're not being given the choice, you're not being, uh, you know, consulted. And that's our, that's our issue. Uh, I guess the biggest concern is that right now you spend a lot of money for a bottle of water. Um, most of the bottles that Concordia puts into recycling bins, if they even get put into a recycling bin, don't end up recycled anyways. So there's a lot of bottles going to landfill right now. Um, it's also an issue of human rights. Uh, water is a right. Access to clean water is a right. Um, so to make students pay for water isn't really okay with a lot of people. Um, the administration's main argument is that it's about choice and that students have the choice right now to go to the tap or to the machine, but that's not always the case. A lot of the time the machines are a lot closer to your classrooms or there's only one water fountain on your entire floor, so you have to go try and find that water fountain and hope that the administration has actually taken care of that water fountain, that it's working. A lot of the time they aren't. Um, so right now there's a big push on the administration that they actually repair those water fountains that aren't working, take care of the ones that need to be taken care of as well. We're trying to get them to install like a higher faucet so that you can easily fill a water bottle or a mug without having to maneuver or do any MacGyver tricks. Um, do you guys have any questions or want to talk about that in any way? Do you guys know how many are not working or our, uh, the maintenance isn't very well. Like, like you, you just said. I don't, have, I don't have the numbers here with me, but their like facilities management does have the numbers of which ones are working and which ones aren't. Um, for example, if you go to Loyola, there's there's some water fountains that actually have like mold growing on them, and that's yeah. So so they're saying that the administration says that it's a free choice that you can choose to either drink out of the water fountain or the well-maintained bottled water dispensing machine and they're not maintaining your water fountain so they're not really giving you a fair choice if they don't maintain those necess necessary ways of getting water then they're not actually giving us a fair choice so we all know there's a lack of space on campus a lack of student space a lack of just public space that you can just use um, and the CSU wants to really get it up and going, the Student Center. Um, and I just want to know, or we just want to know your thoughts on the Student Center. Is it something you'd like to see happen? And is it something that you think is foreseeable for, for you as a student now? So. Just say what the Student Center would have, like exactly. It would be, it'd be a one-stop shop for all the student services. Building. All the clubs would be one building, all the associations would be in one building. Every, everything that's like split up now would be in the, under that one roof. So it's easier, convenient for the, for, the, for the student because we're the only university right now in Quebec that does not have a student center. And if you look, everyone uses the seventh floor or the GM, they're just all scattered. And yes, we're 33,000 students, but at the same time, in order to build that community, in order to build that identity of Concordia, we need to have one place that we can all just gather and, and just be, you know what I mean? So besides the seventh floor, where else are people supposed to go? Next week we have a council meeting, yes. Wednesday at 6.30. 
at Loyola. Um, it'd be really great to see you guys there as, po as many people as possible. You guys are always welcome to council meetings. You yeah. can speak at any time. Everyone's welcome to speak. Hi, I'm Heather Lucas. I'm the president of the CSU. Okay. Uh, when we ran the election, we said that our, our one of our priorities was accountability and transparency, and we feel that by having these monthly town halls, casually and openly, uh, we would be able to be fully accountable to the students, and if ever they had any concerns or issues, they could bring it up openly, and uh, that's why we're, we're doing it. Uh, today we focus a lot on uh, having a water bottle free campus, uh, having the student center up and going, and uh, fighting tuition increases. Uh, I thought the turnout was decent uh, for what it was. I really hoped that more students would have came out, but uh, we'll take what we can get. <laughs> so hopefully more people will come to the next one. And so you have many more coming yeah, we up. we have one once a month, uh, usually the first Wednesday of every month uh, from 12 to 2. So the next one will be at Loyola, and then from then on it will be downtown. And there's a schedule in the agenda and on the uh, CSU webpage. There's no general themes, it's just kind of what the execs are working on at the moment, and if there ever there's anything else that they want to bring up that's completely irrelevant to what we're working on, they're more than welcome to. What they can get out of it is they can see what their CSU is doing, and that their CSU is working for them. Because at the end of the, end of the day, the students are our boss, and we want to make sure that whatever needs the students have, that they're being addressed, because that's why we're here at the end of the day, is to lobby and to serve, and we want to make sure we're doing our job. Those were some highlights from the first town hall meeting that the Concordia Student Union has held this year. They promised to hold one every month. The next one is at Loyola. Check out your calendar or the CSU website to find out the details about the next town hall.